Hey guys, it's your girl K Marie. Um, I figured I'd get a quick video in before I leave. So, excuse my glasses. I'm really not feeling well. And I went to the doctor today. So, um, let's see how we're gonna start this video. So, I wanted to talk about spinal taps, but I'm still going to get into that. We'll get into that this week. But I really wanted to get into my shunt. Stenton surgery. I'm sorry. Not shunt. I wanted to get into my stenton surgery, to be honest. So, I wanted to talk about that. So, let's get into that. First, I want to say, I want to thank everyone for being a subscriber. I want to thank everyone for sharing my video. Oh my God, I, I'm getting so many shares. I want to thank everyone for liking it. Just, I just want to thank you guys. The whole point of me doing this is for awareness. A lot of people is not aware of this condition that we have. And that even people who have pseudotumor is still not aware. So they want to just have a better understanding and be more educated of the, you know, I call this the quiet storm once again. So they, because it just, it just sneaks up on you, you know, um, a lot of people just want to be aware. So another thing, if you want to hear more about it, you can check out my last two videos It's right on my page. So we're just going to jump right into this video with my stent surgery. Once again, I had many stent surgeries. So I was just right now, I'm just going to talk about my first one. So. My first sense surgery was just really horrifying. First of all, when you go to the hospital, like emergency room, you're having a headache or, you know, they definitely give you a CAT scan because they want to make sure you don't have a brain tumor, first of all. Um, and, you know, pseudo tumor is not a brain tumor. It mimics a tumor. Pseudo is mimicking. So they make sure you don't have a brain tumor. So first of all, you know, they usually do it without cat skin dye. Sorry. They usually do it without cat skin dye. So I'm allergic to cat skin dye. It's just so crazy how I'm allergic to that. I eat shellfish and everything. They usually say it has shellfish in it, the dye. First time I realized that, I went through a cat skin machine. They put it in my IV. I couldn't breathe. Like, I thought I was going to die. And the man telling me, hold my breath. Sir, hold my breath. Really? No. So now when I got this now back to the surgery, when you get that surgery done, you're getting it done under the machine because they got to see the veins and arteries as they're doing it. <laughs> so as they're doing my surgery, I have to have cascade die. So now I cannot be put to sleep. Okay, let me say that again. As they're doing my stent procedure, I cannot be put to sleep. So as they're putting this catheter in my neck right here. So you had a choice. I don't think it's crazy. I don't think I really had a choice, but they even put it in your groin area, which is right above your pelvic, you know, on the right or left area. A few times I had my pelvic area once and I think I had it in my neck one time. Well, yeah, first time I had it in my neck. I had it in my neck, like right somewhere over, right here, right here. So I felt them put this catheter in there, the size of a pen, outside of the pen. And um, I had to be awake. So I felt them pop it in there, like pop. Now, I had to have cascade die, which I'm allergic to, which I choke. So in my brain, um going crazy like you ever saw that movie awake with ashton kutcher i kept thinking i i thought i was gonna die i kept thinking of the movie awake the whole time because i was awake i wasn't asleep i heard them talking my eyes was wide open i'm like oh my god i'm crying they're telling me keep still i had to be awake for 80 percent of the procedure so i felt them with the catheter in it's a catheter and it's like a balloon Supposedly, it's like a little balloon that opens.
Because basically, with the procedure, there's a tool, right? They go in your artery, right through here, like I said, pop. And it's a tool that goes in there and the balloon opens, so it could just open up the artery that's closed. The stenosis, you have narrowing. So I had narrowing in my brain. So I felt them i swear to everything i love i felt everything i was like screaming and he's telling me don't move don't move i swear like uh, uh, oh my god it's my head hurt right now talking about it i felt them go inside through here once they bust in there with the thing that's for like a the thick as a damn pin cap i felt them go in busting i felt them with the cap that i felt them go all the way through here all the way up in there. Even when they went down near the, near the um, pelvic, um, I'm sorry, near my growing area, I swear I felt them go through there, do the freaking area that had all the way up. I felt that sucker all the way, all the way up in there in my damn head. And they kept getting me Benadryl, Benadryl, Benadryl. It wasn't putting me to sleep. I, I don't know, I guess they was putting it in my IV. They couldn't, I couldn't be sedated because they said, because I'm allergic to the dye. So they didn't want me to be sedated. And I don't know, maybe I will choke in my sleep. I have no idea why. But I know that the whole time I'm praying in my mind, like, oh God, oh God, please Lord. Please Lord. I was crying. Like, I don't know if you ever had, you ever did a silent cry, like in the inside you're crying. I don't know, but I did that day. It felt like the longest hour of my life and the doctor kept telling me keep still and i'm like i am like i wanted to freaking strangle the doctor he's telling me stop moving stop moving i'm like i'm not moving like and i felt it go and i it felt like you ever hear somebody scratch a chalkboard that's what it felt like in my brain i felt him scraping this damn catheter all the way in the artery in my damn brain okay i'm not scaring anybody it's just that this was my experience, you know, and I'm watching YouTube. I'm watching, I watched that somebody else had that same experience as me. And I'm like, sorry, it's here in my mouth. Somebody really had that same experience that I went through. And I was shocked when I saw it. I thought I was the only one who went through that. I was really surprised to see that someone else went through that like me. Like, really? Like... It's so crazy that I went through that. But um, back to what I was saying before, it's crazy that a lot of people still don't know what I went through. Like, especially my, my family and my close family, like mother, father, sister, brother, fiance, children. They understand what I went through. But my real, my, my immediate family, cousins and all that, they don't really understand what my condition is so i'm putting it all out there so friends family everyone can really maybe they'll see the video and understand what it really is so someone else would not go through this you know or if they happen to go through it they will understand what pseudo tumor is and have some knowledge because i feel like doctors know what this is but they know because they read books in school but i feel like when you speak to a person who's really going through it or been through it, that's real knowledge of it, you know? Doctors could read a book on it, but no, I feel like I'd rather speak to someone. But having narrowing in the brain is very dangerous. i tell you that. It's very, very dangerous. Because stenosis is like having no blood or like a... Basically, your blood is not flowing to the brain. It's like a reduced amount of blood flowing to the brain that's clogging up the artery. So imagine that, you know? So you complain of headaches and everything. Cause there's no blood. It's like a it's like a reduced amount of blood supply going to your brain, going to the artery in your brain. Okay? So now this basically that's narrowing. That's narrowing, basically. So now what the procedure is doing, this thinning procedure, is opening up the clog arteries in your brain, basically, the vessels. So 
it's like it's it's needed. Like some people, you know, they're against the surgeries, they're against stuff like that, you know. And I know people who like myself didn't have to get a a shot, you know. Now, like my doctors, like I had another stent surgery recently, and my doctors are talking about like a shunt, you know, for me. And, you know, it, it, it really scares me, you know, like, because I'm afraid to get a shunt. This is why, like, the women that I'm speaking to now, I'm asking them a lot of questions about a shunt because I'm afraid, you know? And I know that, you know, like, they're telling me, like, don't be afraid, you know, stuff like that. But I'm really afraid, you know, to get a shunt. So, I actually write a lot of women about it. I'm doing a lot of research on the shunt, but you can only get but so many stents in your brain, in your body, period. So that's another situation that I'm battling right now. So just know that you're not the only one that is battling things, you know? So I don't know. So right now I am, you know, losing weight and stuff like that just so I can be healthy to, to beat this. And I don't know. It's just a lot going on. So also getting a stent prevents you from getting an aneurysm. It prevents you from having a stroke. So it actually prevents you from getting a lot of things, you know, because I could have had a stroke. Knock on wood. I could have had an aneurysm. Knock on wood, you know. So basically me having these stents in my head, it prevented me from having a lot of medical situations, you know, that could have happened. So I'm actually grateful that the doctor that I had who seen these things, you know, got this done for me. So I'm actually really grateful. So I just want to discuss one more thing, guys. So one more thing I would like to discuss is when not enough blood flows to the brain, you get symptoms like dizziness, some people, they have, like, light faint spells. Some people, they faint. Um, some people get aneurysms. Some people get strokes. So these are things that you need to, you know, pay attention to. Some people get loss of balance. Some people get weakness in the legs. Like, a lot of headaches. But see, headaches are things that... We really can't control because a lot of us get headaches for little things. But when you have all, the, all of these little symptoms together, you have to really pay attention. So strokes, strokes, weakness, mental confusion, stuff like that, sudden weakness, headaches. So we really got to take that into consideration. So make sure you always speak to your primary care provider if you hear anything like that. So guys, once again, I am not a provider. I'm just here to spread awareness. So guys, once again, I'm not a provider. I'm just here to spread awareness. And we all are in this together. Please make sure you subscribe to my page. You can leave any comments. Please do not be afraid to drop any comments. Give me advice. I am open to any advice. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram at the real K Marie. I will put that on the screen. It will be in my description box. You can also follow me on Facebook. And once again, please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't be afraid to share. Okay? Thank you so much. And have a great day. Bye. And again, thank you. Please, guys, continue to take this journey with me. Follow me on this walk and this journey, and we will be great as one together. We will not let pseudo Tuma. We will not let pseudo Tuma. Mm -mm. Guys, thank. Guys, thank you for taking this walk with me. Follow me on this journey, and we will not let pseudo Tuma take over our lives.